Hey guys, Richard here with eBike Reviews and Adventures, and today we're going to take a look at the Zora bike. It's called the Zora Master. It's a cargo style e-bike, and we're going to talk about it, go over some of its features, and I'm going to tell you what I think. So let's get started. Okay, so a lot of manufacturers and people will tell you that a cargo style e-bike is a vehicle replacement. And I tell you what, I'm not so sure that it can replace a vehicle, but it can certainly do a lot of things that you do with your current vehicle. And so I'm going to show you some of those features here in just a moment, but first, let's take a look at this gorgeous bike. It has a Bafang 750 watt motor that provides plenty of torque in order for you to haul some cargo around. It's got an integrated 15 amp hour battery right there underneath the frame. Hidden away, I like that when they're hidden away and you don't have a big old battery sitting out here somewhere. So I like that about this bike. Of course, it is a 20 by 4 fat tire bike. And as you can see, I have been using it already. And uh, yeah, it's been doing well for me. Up here in the front, we do have an integrated front headlight. We have the rack that came with the bike right here attached to the front. And this is a large rack, guys. You can put a lot of stuff up here and strap it down. Over here on the side, you can see that it is a keyed battery compartment there with onboard or offboard charging. We have a double ring, chain ring right here, which I always like to see. appreciate that. Moving on toward the back here, right back here, we do have the controller that controls. Sometimes on e-bikes, you'll find the controller hidden away, uh, like in the down tube or something. But they have that one mounted right there. It's out of the way. There's nothing wrong with that. This bike does come with a double kickstand, and it's a large kickstand too. So when you get a lot of cargo loaded up on here, it's nice and sturdy. It's not going to go side to side. It's going to hold everything upright. And that's really important if you start hauling children on the back. You don't want the bike falling over. Now speaking of children, this bike is designed here with some foot rests that you can flip down when in use, or you can fold them up to get them out of the way. And that's because it's designed for you to be able to put a cushion back here for a passenger seat and haul some larger children. Now Zora Bike does offer some additional accessories and we'll talk about those in a few moments that will give you more capability out of this bike. I found the cushion to be pretty standard. It's actually bigger than normal, which, which provides a little more support for your tush. And it's soft enough that, you know, you can get away with that seat right there without having to upgrade. It does have a quick release latch. Now moving up here to the cockpit area, one of the things you'll notice is these little guys right here. What is that? Well, this bike is equipped with hydraulic disc brakes. And on this bike right here, they give you a reservoir so you can kind of see the, uh, the level of the fluid for your hydraulic disc brakes, which you should never have to add anything unless you have a leak. So it's kind of interesting design there that you can see that right up there on top. But it's not intrusive. It's out of the way, so it's not a problem for us. If you notice, all the wiring is nicely wrapped without any issues there. And it goes into the frame down here and out the bottom to the controller right down there. I like it when they take time to wrap the wiring so you don't have a lot of loosey-goosey laying around. Now moving on up here to the cockpit area, they did give us an adjustable stem. And I like that. So each one of these little rings here, you can take off and lower the stem down if you need to lower it down if you're a shorter person. And also you can adjust the handlebars right here and you can tilt them flat or you can raise them up a little bit further straight up and down. Now something that's not advertised on the website, and I'm a little surprised, and that is this bike comes equipped with blinkers. So you have a blinker switch right here for your left turn signal and right turn signal. We have these faux leather wrapped on the handle grips here, and they do an adequate job. There's no, no problems with those. We do have the power on button, and when you hit the button, there's, you get an almost an instant response out of the display. You have a set button here that allows you to toggle through some of the functions. And of course, your pass buttons right here. We'll talk more about that display in just a moment, but moving on over to the right, we do have the standard 7-speed Shimano thumb shifter here and the thumb throttle right down here. And here's something else that's kind of interesting. They don't talk about it on the website, but there is an, another button right down here. And what that does, guys, let me show you. We're going to go ahead and put this in pass one. We're going to hit the throttle. Okay, so we hit the throttle, the motor starts engaging. But if you hit this button right here, then you hit the throttle, I got nothing. You get nothing. So that's kind of like a cutoff switch for uh, power to the motor. So it's kind of like a safety switch. You know, you can always kick that on and off and prevent from, you know, accidentally hitting the throttle here and engaging the motor down there. So I kind of like that. It's kind of cool. 
Let's get back to this display now for a moment because if you can see the display in the sunshine we're having today, uh, it does. It is a standard display. I mean, you get all the information that you would expect. And right down here, you've got uh, different modes that you can toggle through. That's time. That's total miles. There's your trip miles. Um, and uh, you know, it's got the pass level right down here at the, the bottom. Now, even though the, most of the screen is black and white, you do have some color built in, which just kind of adds to the aesthetics of it. For instance, if we engage the motor, you'll see it start to turn blue there to show us, hey, our speed. And that's in, in blue as well, so that's kind of cool. Now, another thing that I like about the display is they allow you to adjust the, the um, number of pass levels that you have. So the bike ships with five pass levels, but you can go in here into the settings and change it so you have nine pass levels. And I really like that because that gives you more flexibility, uh, you know, for, for your riding experience and the speed that you want to that you want to have. So, and for instance, if it only has five pass levels, the the difference between pass level one and two might be, you know, six or seven, eight miles an hour. But when you change it to nine pass level settings, then the difference between one and two might only be two or three miles per hour. So it just gives you more flexibility there. And I really appreciate that. I haven't found in the settings yet, if you're able to go in there and set the speed for each pass level, you may be able to, I haven't found it. And the information that they provide in the owner's manual wasn't really good. So uh, it's just gonna take a little uh, finagling and getting in there and testing it out and seeing what we can do. Now, one of the things that's missing on this bike that I kind of wish it had is that is the front suspension. It does have rigid forks. And I would think that for a cargo bike or a bike that you're going to be hauling passengers on, you'd definitely want some suspension forks on this because it would just soften the bumps as you go over them. However, because it does have the 20 by 4 fat tires, you know, that does provide a lot of cushion too. Just don't air these up all the way. And it's safe to uh, leave them aired down just a little bit to give you a little more squish. And what I found is it actually handles the bumps very well. So I don't really miss the front suspension too much. If I was taking this off-road, that might be a different story. But just hitting the normal bumps that you find on the sidewalk or hitting some bumps in the road, uh, it's, you don't notice it at all, and it provides a nice ride. Since we got this powered up, let's go ahead and show you the turn signals real quick. If you can see those flashing there. So they're not real bright in the daytime. At night, they're going to provide more, uh, you know, more notification for anybody who might be riding behind you. And one other thing I'll point out is this is considered a step-through bike, but it is a taller step-through because they do have this support here because they want you to be able to haul a lot of weight. This bike is capable of 400 pounds total, passenger and cargo. So with that support bar up here, it just means you have to raise your leg up a little bit taller uh, a little bit higher to get on and off but it's just, really it's it's not a problem at all and i haven't really said much about this color but man take a look at that color isn't that gorgeous look at that it's, it's an orange but it's more like a metallic orange so it's got a little little bit of a sparkle to it and i really like that i can tell you the few times that i've been out riding this bike now i've been getting a lot of looky-loos i've been getting a lot of notice uh you know a lot of people looking at me waving at me because they see this bike coming and it's uh, you know it's a stylish Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the, uh, the accessories that we have for this bike. Okay, first of all, I don't yet have the passenger seat that goes on the back rack right there, but in this configuration right here, you could haul, uh, you know, maybe a larger kid. One thing to note right here, though, is when you are hauling passengers, these things down here are great for a place to rest your feet, but they're not real strong that I wouldn't want to put my entire body weight on it in order to step up on this to get on the bike. Uh, it'd be best to just kind of straddle the bike and sit down and then put your feet up here to rest. So in this configuration, you can have a cushion seat for bigger passengers or Zora Bike sells this fence right here for smaller passengers. Now again, you have to imagine that you've got the cushion seat right down here. So you have smaller passengers that you can set down inside here. And there's enough to put two small children in here. And this fence helps protect them in the event that there's an accident. It just kind of holds them in inside a little bit better when we're back here wiggling around. And I really like that. And then yet another option is to add some paneer bags to the back back here. And I didn't get these through Zora Bike. This is something I already had, but they fit nice. I mean, they, they fit almost perfect on here. So I can have some saddle bags in order to haul some additional supplies or gear, or whatever I might be doing that day. Now this rack up here is great for hauling uh, bulky items that you might need to just strap onto the front of your bike right here. 
Or you can also get this optional basket that Zorbike sells, and then you can have a complete basket appear on the front, which attaches to the existing rack that's already there by four screws that you put down through the middle there. But that gives you some additional capability for hauling stuff and, and being able to contain it inside just a little bit better. And if that's not enough capability for you, then Zora also sells this extra large rack that you can put on the back of the bike right here. Look how big that is. That thing is monstrous. That is about 15 and a half by 20 inside dimensions right here. And you can attach that to the back of the bike. And this allows you to haul a lot of cargo for sure. You can really stack this stuff up. And because you're going to be hauling cargo, I would say you may want to go ahead and pick up an optional um, net to go over your cargo right here. This net right here is about a 15 by 15 is how they sell it, but it expands to a 30 by 30. So it allows you to put a lot of cargo up inside this thing right here and strap it all down so it's not falling off. Okay guys, I know you're going to be having so much fun with this bike that you're definitely going to be making trips to the grocery store. And that's what this box is right, this bag is right here. It's an insulated bag that I purchased separately uh, off of Amazon, but it fits almost perfectly inside this rack right here. So it contains it all. And now it's insulated and it's going to allow me to go to the grocery store and pick up quite a few uh, frozen items or even cold items and still make it back home again. Hey guys, I got to tell you, it's an extremely hot day today and the humidity is really high as well, but I'm enjoying this ride. So let's just keep on going. All right, guys, here's a view from the cockpit area, and I'm going to stop pedaling so we're not bouncing too much. But uh, I do have the throttle set right now, so I can go full throttle uh, just by hitting this without having to adjust the pass settings. Uh, but that's optional. You can, you can make that adjustment if you want to. I'm going to spin around right here. Get away from the noise a little bit. All right, so from a standstill, we're going to stop right here and just go throttle only and see how fast we can go and pay attention to how fast it picks up and goes. And this is without pedaling. 8, 10, 11, 13, 15, 18, 20, 22, 23, 25, 26, and almost 27, we're still climbing. So this bike can go faster than, you know, the advertised speed of 25 miles per hour, which I like, because we all know I like to go fast. So we're gonna go ahead and stop here again for a second. Now we're gonna take off and we're gonna use our pedal assist to get going. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up here to like three or four. Let's just go all the way, maybe five. And so we're gonna hit the throttle, get us going, and I'm gonna start pedaling as well. And there's 8, 10, 12, 14, 18, 22. Really can't pedal any faster, but the point is with uh, just a little bit of pedal assist there, you can get this thing up and going really fast. So I really like that about this, about this bike. It's got the speed 
and it's got the giddy up. Now, like most e-bikes, it doesn't allow you to pedal all the way up to 28 miles an hour or 25, their advertised speed. And that's just because the gearing on the bike is a little too uh, too big. It needs to have a, a smaller gear or maybe an eight gear, uh, eight gears on it. But that's okay. It still does what we need it to do. Now, let's take into consideration for a moment that you have uh, children on the back or you have some sensitive cargo or whatever. You know, you don't necessarily want a jackrabbit to uh, take off right from the start, right? So you want that slightly slower takeoff, which you can control with the throttle. And then you can get going faster if you need to. So I like that. So I've got to tell you, I've already released a couple of videos on this. I did the unboxing assembly video, and then I did a, uh, I had to make a shopping trip run because I, uh, I lost a screw. So I had to go down to the hardware store and find a screw. And so that was kind of fun. And so uh, I went ahead and recorded that and posted those videos, even though I had not done the full review. But I'm telling you this because I want you to know that I've had a chance to, to ride this bike for just a little bit and I'm enjoying it. It's, uh, it's a fun bike. It's easy to handle. The, the weight seems to be well balanced on it. So overall, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm happy that it's a 20 inch fat tire. I'm happy with the 750 motor. I'm happy with the speed of top speed of 25 and even up to 28 miles per hour. If you notice, when we're cruising along, I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate again when I hit the sidewalk right here. But once you're already going, and you're already in motion, and you hit the throttle, there's a little bit of a delay. See, there's a, about a three, three second delay or something. So we're cruising, I'm off the throttle, I'm gonna hit the throttle now, and now the motor starts to engage. So there is a bit of a delay there, Whereas, whereas when you're sitting still, when you hit the throttle, it almost takes off immediately. I mean, it just wants to, to get going. So I'm not sure why there's a little bit of a delay while you're riding, but that just adds to the safety of, you know, because it's a cargo bike, you're hauling kids, you're hauling cargo. So I don't mind that too much that there's a slight delay. If you're pedaling, we'll slow down here a little bit, but you're already in motion. Yeah, there was about, uh, what was that, three rotations of the pedal before it kicks in. So, but once it kicks in, uh, you know, it's going to take you where you're, wherever it is you need to go. I do have a little rubbing on the back, so I believe I'm going to have to do a little adjustment on the rear brakes just to make sure everything's good there, but I, I think one of the rear brakes is, is rubbing just a little bit. I only hear it when I'm at a top speed, you know, going faster. I don't notice it so much when I'm going a little lower. So guys, there's a lot of things you can do with a cargo style e-bike with the appropriate accessories that come with it or, you know, that you purchase separately. Um, but there's just, it gives you so much capability and so much use. And so this is why a lot of people say, you know, it replaces my car. It really can in some instances. In fact, I've already gone to the UPS store to deliver uh, some Amazon returns. Uh, going to the grocery store is not going to be a problem. Small errands like that makes it so much easier. And then think of this. If you need additional cargo capacity or capability, add a trailer. Add a bike trailer to the back of this thing and think of how much more cargo you'd be able to haul. You know, maybe you go to the grocery store and you put all your cold items up here in the bag and then you put all your uh, non-perishables in, uh, in the cargo trailer that you haul behind it. So again, it's just so much capability that cargo style e-bikes like this offer and it's something that you should be considering to uh, to maybe offset your wear and tear on your current vehicle and you know what if ever necessary you could recharge this using a solar power station or something like that because you never have to worry about buying fuel for it so guys who do you think this bike is for I would say it's for young families who have small children that just want to take them out for an afternoon stroll or an afternoon ride or maybe get down to the park or over to a friend's house for a birthday party it's for anyone who maybe um, makes short trips to the grocery store near their home. And instead of fighting traffic and driving your expensive car and, and burning all that fuel, and, you know, a small bike like this will certainly do the job with the proper accessories. Or you can just ride it as is and just go out for an evening stroll after dinner or something around your neighborhood and still enjoy the ride. Take it to the park. Tour the city. There's just so many options that you can do and there's just so much capability for a cargo style e-bike. So hey, 
you know what? I've enjoyed this bike. It's been a great ride. I think it's priced well. It's current sale price of $13.99. Uh, go check it out. Look for that discount code. Look for the links down below and go check it out. And if you have questions about it, let me know because uh, I'm happy to do some additional testing. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. I will be doing a range test to see how well it does. And uh, you'll be seeing some additional videos as well with me out using this, going to the store, going grocery shopping. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, hey, check out this next video.